let's put these scriptures on the screen. Uh, 2 Chronicles 20 and 1. I want to read 1 through 4. I'm going to read 14 through 15. And I may read 17 as well. So y'all walk with me. After this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Minyanites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom, Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at Hazazan Tamar. Keep going. Jehoshaphat was terrified of this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. Keep going. And y'all heard the story to go before, but God gave me a new twist on it as he always does. So the people, so people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem. The spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was just Jehazel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of jo Joel, son of Mataniah, a Levite who was the descendant of Asaph. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. God is speaking to somebody in the room today. Based on what's going on in your life, do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army for the battle is not yours. But God, you not even need to fight. Take your positions. You will not need to, need to fight, but take your positions. You will not need to fight, but take your positions. You will not need to fight, but take a position. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. No matter what you keep going back, go back to this. I need to say that again. He is with you. Somebody need to know you ain't by yourself. He is with you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. He is with you. Touch your neighbor today and say, fix fight, fix favor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a believer, not a doubter. As you hold your Bibles and your phone apps up, I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, never beneath. I can have do and be what the word says I can have do and be. Thanks be unto God who has fixed this fight and put it in my favor. Somebody got five seconds to give God your loudest shout. Fix fight, fix favor. I feel a song in my spirit. So fix fight. So y'all, y'all sports fans, how many sports fans we got in the room? I just need to know. We got women that love sports too, by the way. So there, there were a lot of sports events or fights even that some of us feel Deacon Anderson were fixed. Let me just talk about a few fights that may have been suggestedly fixed. Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. The phantom, the phantom punch where Sonny Liston falls and he was barely touched. Hmm. Everybody say fix fight. <laughs> I'm just saying. The 1972 USA Basketball Olympic game where the Russians defeated the USA team by getting three different opportunities to inbound the ball. Three different, how many of y'all remember, your old schools remember that? And after the third time, they actually scored the bucket and won by one point. Somebody say the fix was in. More recently, 2013, Miami Heat versus the San Antonio Spurs, where Chris Boss gets the rebound, throws it to Ray Allen, kicks it in the corner, and he hits this shot to take him into overtime, uh, obviously winning the game. Um, football, the 2015 Seattle Seahawks and the New England Patriots, they're right on the goal line. All you got to give it do is give it to Marshawn Lynch. He had been killing the game the whole the whole game and they decided to throw and he threw an interception right on the goal line somebody say fix fight <laughs> possibly but the only fight y'all that I truly believe in my heart 100 100 percent that was fixed is the one that was at Calvary 
When Jesus knew that he'd rise from the dead, but not only rise from the dead, but he rose with all power in your hand and he and his hands, and he turns around and gives it to you. You got the power. Somebody look at your name and say, You got the power. But even with the power, every day it seems like there's a fight going on. How many feel like you, every day there's a different type of fight going on in your life? Battling loved ones. Come on, talk back to me. Coworkers. Sometimes you battle your own doggone self. And here it is. The reason why we're in these fights, and I just personally believe this, is sometimes the enemy has basically peeked into your future. He literally, it's almost like he sees what God is about to do with you. He sees that God's going to get some glory out of your life. If you don't quit, it's the law of attrition. He wants to see if you're going to give in and throw in the towel. He just wants you to give in and throw in the towel so you forfeit everything that God has for you. So he starts messing with your family. Starts messing with you on your job. Then he starts messing with you by having you mess with yourself, by you doubting yourself, by you questioning yourself. Am I good enough? Am I qualified enough? He don't call the qualified. He simply qualifies the call. So with that all being said, the one thing that we have to remember as ambassadors, carriers, what is an ambassador? A carrier. I carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got to recognize and never forget the battle that I'm going through is actually already won. It's already won where, Pastor Beatty? In the supernatural realm. We're simply going through the natural process to physically see the manifestation of the physical victory. Mm. Why do you say that, Pastor Beatty? We only, we, we're, going, we're going through the physical process to see the manifestation of the actual victory. Why do you say that? Because the scripture says here in Matthew 6 and 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The reason why the, the scriptures say that it's already done on earth as it is in heaven, because in heaven things are already full and complete. Touch your neighbor, say it's full and complete already in heaven. So what God is literally saying, he wants to bring full and complete down on earth. I speak full and complete on your jobs. I speak full and complete in your career choices. I speak full and complete on your business decisions, your parenting, your relationship. I speak, somebody needs to shout, full and complete. You never want a pastor that's going to tell you, you need to get out of that. Oh, you, don't, you don't want no pastor that's going to sit up and tell you all the negativity that's going on in your life. You know somebody that's going to strengthen you, tell you you can make it, you can do. You can do all things through Christ. That's strength. Yeah, I got to admonish you every now and then, but I want to let you know what the possibilities are in your life. I learned this a while ago. Stop hanging around folk that's tolerating you. Hang around folk that's going to celebrate the greatness that lives inside of you. Hang around folk that's going to say, you got this thing. I love to hear walk around uh, uh, Elder Cali every now and boy, you got this. That thing was good. Man, you blessed me today. Hang around folk that's going to celebrate the good that exists inside of you. But in order to win this fixed fight, you got to do one thing. I talked about it two weeks ago. Some of y'all won't, some of us won't acknowledge we in a fight. We walk in here blind, y'all, acting like it don't exist. Some stuff do exist. Acknowledge that you're in a fight. And the reason why you need the knowledge that you're in a fight is because of territory. Here, Joseph Jehoshaphat is in a fight, not because of what happened in the 20th chapter. What happened, you got to read the before chapter. If you read the before chapter, you read uh, chapter 19, there were some things that he was setting in place. There was some order and some structure that he was trying to set in place that was going to give glory to God. And because he was setting order in place in the 19th chapter, the Bible says that, and it happened after this. After he had been setting up order in the 19th chapter, the enemy came against him, and he came against him because of terror. Somebody scream territory. territory. 
Just like Satan is coming to you, coming to you, he coming to you because he's trying to get your territory. What territory? It ain't physical, it's mental. He's trying to mess with your mind. He's trying to get this territory. He's trying to give you to get you to give in up here. Because if you give in up here, you ain't going to do nothing out here. So the enemy's trying to mess with your mind. That's why you got to have the mind of Christ. Philippians 2 and 5, it says, let this mind be in me. Be also the mind that's in Christ Jesus. That's why it's important that you guard your mind. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to guard your mind. Everything starts in your mind. That's why you got to mind his business. Don't mind your business. Mind his business in your mind. It starts with your mind. And your mind, whatever's in your thoughts, will lead you to your character. Whatever's in your character is going to take you to your destiny. And he's trying to mess with your thoughts. Because your thoughts, we said this a while ago, leads to what you say. Then what you start saying leads to what you do. And then what you do leads you to some habits of what you do. And what you habit, habitly do, that's not a word, I created it. Somebody said, I like it. If you do as a habit, what you do as a habit now becomes your character. And that character can become your destiny. So you can't speak death and then want life. I told y'all the other day, he just takes what you say, but it starts in your mind. That saw a man think it. These kids wearing me out. Then you start walking around here looking. Your character becomes wore out. And your character becomes wore out because of what you said. If you start saying, I started to say, man, Cairo gives me life. And I start walking with life. I start walking with life because of what I said. What you say can position you for your destiny. And some of y'all, you may not have what you think you st should have. You may not have the house you want. You may not have the car. Y'all, I remember 1996, I had a Hyundai Passport. Do y'all remember the Hyundai Passport? I had a Honda Passport. It was a truck, by the way. It wasn't a passport like you're going out of town. Ketchup mustard. Come on, y'all. I had a Hyundai Pass Honda Passport. I was on tour with R. Kelly. I was making good money. We was eating good fish. But I wanted a Honda Passport. I had a Honda Passport. Boy, I wish I could put that thing on the screen right now. I kept the wheels clean. I kept the car clean. It was dark navy blue, y'all. It was bomb.com. I drove that thing like it was a Cadillac Escalade. I didn't want a Cadillac Escalade. I was happy with having the Honda Passport. But because I acted like I had the best years down the line, God gave, what am I trying to tell somebody? You better enjoy that two bedroom apartment. You better clean that thing up. You better make it look like it's a five bedroom crib. You better enjoy that car. You one, Some of y'all wondering why God won't bless you with the new. You can't take care of the old. If we walk out there and looked inside of your cars right now, tissue laying everywhere, dashboard dirt. You better clean up what you got now to be able to, to receive what he got later. Somebody said, clean it up. <laughs> clean up starts with your mind. Before it ever becomes physical, it's in your mind. I hate filth. I hate dirt because I'm a kingdom citizen. I like order. I like things to be cleaned up. I like things to be put up. I did it in my apartment 30 years ago, 31 years ago. Shalon and I lived on Estes. We lived on, before we was on Estes, we lived 1000 South Austin. We was in Oak Park. We had to walk three flights of stairs. I was a musician. I had to carry my drums out the car because I didn't want them to break in my car and steal the drum set. So we would get out of concerts at 12 midnight. I would take my drums, bring them upstairs, put them neatly in the corner as if I had a crib. 
Some of y'all deep. Some of y'all. In other words, I was acting like what I wanted in the future. I was taking care of what God had. This is what I can afford, but I'm not going to allow what I can afford to dictate how I take care of it. So here it is, here it is, here it is. Point one, you got to know how to get serious. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to know how to get serious. When the nation of Judah was faced with trouble and opposition, they didn't play with God. They got serious with God. The Bible says it happened after this. After chapter 19, this occurs. All kind of hell breaks loose against Jehoshaphat and his army. What does that mean for us? After you've been focused on prioritizing God, after you've been setting order in place, after you've been praying and praising God, you've been seeking his face, you've been making sure everybody around you is locked and loaded with God, you've been setting order in God's kingdom, that's when trouble happens. When you're trying to set order in your house, that's when trouble happens. The enemy messes with people who got assignments from God. If you ain't got an assignment, he ain't. Let me tell y'all something. Let me just put this right here. Faith, the enemy don't care about your faith. The enemy cares about your works. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But faith without when you start working your faith. See, you can say you got faith. Enemy don't care nothing about that. He want to see if you're going to work your faith. If you don't work your faith, he ain't got no problem with you. But once you start working your faith, you start to being focused on prioritizing God, setting things in place, praying and praising, putting strategic plans together for what God wants to do in your life. That's when he comes against you. And guess what he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy? He ain't trying to kill and steal and destroy your faith. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy your works, which lead to your faith. So the enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy your children. That's your works. He's trying to kill, kill, steal, and destroy your marriage. That's your works. So, y'all, I'm trying to get you to understand. I don't want you to shout today. I want you to really understand when the enemy is coming against you, I don't want you to act black. I don't want you to act white. I want you to act kingdom. I I want you to act like you have a DNA inside of you that God gave you. Here it is. Jehoshaphat, verse 3, was terrified by the news. But however, (laughs) he got serious and begged the Lord for guidance. He was terrified, but he begged the Lord for guidance. He ordered everybody in Judah to fast. What's the first point, y'all? What's the first point? You got to know when to get serious. Got no one to get serious. Jehoshaphat was scared, but he went to God for help. He expressed where he was, but he went to God for help. So not if, but when adversity came, he knew who to go to. Sometimes, y'all, when adversity hit us, the first thing we want to do is act natural. We deal with each other in church. Pastor Beatty say we exist to love God by how we love others. We represent the kingdom of God. The kingdom is a sovereign rulership governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with its will, intent, and purpose of producing a community of citizens that reflect the, reflect the nature and lifestyle of the king. We know all of this stuff. In Genesis, God said, let us create man in our image and in our likeness. Let him have dominion in there. We know all of this stuff. But soon as somebody in the church pisses you off, The first thing you do is want to snap back at them. That ain't kingdom. And that's the fight you're going to lose in the flesh. Touch your neighbor, say you always going to lose. You run a chance of losing fleshly flights. But when the enemy comes against you, you can't look at people because Ephesians 6 and 10 says we wrestle not. I can't look at the people that I'm standing in front of. I got to look at the enemy is trying to get two ministers 
that attend Valley Kingdom Ministries. He's trying to get two ministers, two elders, two deacons, two pastors to not be on one accord. The devil is a lie. He's trying to get two members of the church to not like each other. And what's the reason why you don't, I don't like the way she looked at me. But you don't know the reason why she looked like that is because she was mad at what she was going through in her life. If you can look beyond your doggone self, you can see what her need is. But in order to do that, you got to get serious. Uh, before you do anything, you need to read hey, Hebrews 12 and 1. You got to lay aside... You cannot be easily offended and properly represent the kingdom of God. You got to lay aside that stuff. You wonder why some people are blessed. Some people are blessed because they're simply not easily offended. I'm not easily offended. Everything that happens in the kingdom of God, it ain't against you. The enemy is trying to get us disconnected. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, the world is looking for ways and reasons for not to come in church. And we give them to them every week. By how we handle each other. I speak it right now. If you got an issue with somebody in this church, immediately following this sermon, you need to go pull them to the side, say, listen here, I had, a, I had a grievance with you. I'll release you. I'll forgive you and forgive me for holding on to it. It's going to make you and them better. Let me move on. Let me move on. Mike Tyson fought a guy by the name of Buff, Buster Douglas. Mike Tyson lost against Buster Douglas. Mike Tyson, we all expected Mike to win. We felt like that was a fixed fight. Pastor Jeff, if any fight was fixed, it was that one. Buster Douglas come in the ring just sloppy. Like he had drank 18 beers the whole weekend. All weekend he had beer and pizza. Mike Tyson gets in the ring, he's cut up. But Mike Tyson went down. Mike Tyson did not lose the fight because Buster Douglas was better than him. Daryl, Mike Tyson lost the fight because he did not take his opponent seriously. And many of us are losing the fight in the kingdom of God because we don't take the enemy seriously. Mike Tyson could have beat Buster Douglas in his sleep. But because he was not serious about that fight. Touch your neighbor say, you got to know when to get serious. Say, once you're serious, you got to prepare to fight. Second Chronicles 20 and 21, after consulting the people, the king prepared to fight. He appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord, praising him for his holy splendor. They're saying, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. They prepared for the victory. Hmm. Somebody say, they prepared for the victory. Preparation separates those that say they want victory from those that really want victory. In other words, Joseph had positioned himself for what God said. Y'all remember this movie? I'm going to run it back. We got to run it back, run it back. There was a young lady in the movie. Her name was Jennifer Lopez. She played a character by the name of Slim. Her husband was wearing, don't even stop, 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 stop. Pause it right there. Pause it right there. Pause it, pause it, pause it. Her husband was wearing her out. He basically said, if I can't have you, ain't nobody going to have you. If, if, I can't, if I can't have you, I'm going to take you up out of here. And she's had enough nerve to say, I got to get serious with this fight. Because if I keep doing the same thing, if I keep doing the same thing over and over, I can have faith, but faith without works is dead. If I don't work my faith, this man is going to take me. Some of y'all need to have that slim kind of faith that you say, if I don't put an end to this right now, this situation is about to take me out. And I'm not about to let this situation take me out. So what you got to do, you got to prepare 
for victory. So here it is. She sends her child off to be hidden, but she comes back and she starts to train. Play that video. She starts to train. She starts to put the training in. She starts to understand. I got to take this man out because if I don't prepare to take him out, he's going to prepare. He's already prepared to take me out. I got to put some things in place to be able to fight him on every hand. I got to remember that he said, if somebody says something to you, believe them. If somebody say, I'm going to take you out, don't be talking about, oh, he was just playing. If somebody show you who they are, well, I just want to get some prayer words. We just going to pray for them. No, no, prayer, faith without works. Don't you let somebody take you out that you were supposed to take out. And you ain't got to take him out by physically fighting him. She was preparing for a physical fight. But I'm trying to get you to understand the fight that you're in is spiritual. It's supernatural. And if you can't fight a supernatural fight with carnal weapons, they don't work. <laughs> I hear Q in my right ear over here. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in battle for the pulling down of... Some of these things are strongholds, y'all. They done had our parents. They had our parents' parents. You know, somebody, you know how I know you had them? Because, you know, I'm just like this. My mama was like this. Her mama was like this. You mean, I mean because my whole family, and you ought to want to break that cycle because that's not who he created you to be. You're acting. You need to act like you got some sense. Act like you're a part of the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord, here it is. I promise you I'm, gone, I'm done. The word of the Lord was given a few weeks ago by prophetess Belinda. What a mighty word. We've allowed the enemy to take ground. And y'all, this, listen, this is simple preaching. We're talking about how you practically live your life every day. When situations arise, Jehoshaphat started praying and fasting to get a word from the Lord for what he shall do. He didn't want to move before the Lord. He wanted to do what the Lord wanted him to do, so he connected with the Lord. Y'all, we be having drama. Yes, we be. We be having drama. It starts not on Monday. It starts on Sundays. Immediately after we done shouted, sweated out our clothes, our wigs are on this side, eyelashes all over here. And soon as hell break out, we want to cuss somebody out. And that somebody sometimes is our own children. And we wonder why they don't want to be saved. You can't cuss your kids out in 2023 and think they want to come and serve the God that you serve. The God of your salvation. I want the God of somebody's salvation. I don't want the God of my mama's salvation because she cussed me out. My daddy slapped her. I ain't got no power in the house. And they wonder why I'm crazy. I'm speaking for the youth right now. The only God they going to see is the one that you live. They need to see you get in trouble and they need to see you lock arms with the family and start speaking, for God I live, for God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against this family. We wondering what's happened to young America, us. We are what happened to young America. Because every time we get in a pickle on a consistent basis, we're not properly being ambassadors. So you declared the word of the Lord, Prophetess Belinda. We've allowed the enemy to take ground. Come on, musicians, I'm done. And not only have they taken ground, the enemy has camped out. Depression in the church is at an all-time high. What? We haven't church too long. What? <laughs> because we've got in a routine like Mike Tyson. And we didn't recognize how serious the moment was. And because we was in a regular routine, the fight 
wasn't in our favor. In order to get that fight to be in your favor, you got to get out your regular routine. That's why God is waking some of y'all up at 5 o'clock in the morning. He's pushing you. He's trying to let you know there's more that he requires of you. So she said last week, and I want y'all to go two, two weeks ago, go get that word. Stand your ground. Guard the gates of your city. Guard the gates. Get a plan together. Some of y'all, when I told you to walk your neighborhoods, why we got to do all that? Because the enemy ain't taking, the enemy ain't playing with you. God's trying to give you supernatural strategy. She said, take authority. Look at your neighbor and say, take authority. Demand the legions flee. That was the word of the Lord. Never minimize your weapon. Maximize it. You've been ordered by the Lord. Now, the last thing you do, as after you've been prepared to fight, you got to go and actually fight. Now, after we've been prepared to go, we got to actually go. Winning the fight is not physical. Winning the fight is mental. Sometimes winning the fight after it's mental is simply by showing up to the fight. Jehoshaphat could have said, well, I don't have to fight. I'm just going to stand here and just do nothing. And many of us have battles that are going on in our lives and because we've prayed we feel like that's all we had to do and then when it didn't work you start to blame God and now you're fighting the God who supplies all your need and that's all the enemy wants you to do is get in a fight with the God of your salvation he don't want you to be at one with God so winning to me y'all winning is not the destination Winning for me is the actual journey. It's watching Cairo grow up. It's not Cairo making the right decisions every day. That boy make decisions. To, uh, I just have to. <laughs> but when he wakes up every morning, he comes in our room. There's some kind of joy. Boy, if God could have gave us get grandkids first. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. I love my children. But how many grandparents get, get what I'm saying? Them grandbabies. Something about the name of grandkids. <laughs> Let me get you to understand. Winning is not the destination. It's the journey. Life has sold us. And SGM, I want you to hear this. Joan, I want you to hear this for Kingdom Records. Even I know it's a business, but it's God's business. And you need to hear this. The life has sold us that when we do a CD, if only five people bought it, it's a failure. That's what the enemy has sold us. If I do a record and only 50 people, 100 people bought it, it's a failure. But, John, I'm telling you, in this season, we're going to have to walk by faith. As we move forward, and we know we got some records to make in the future, but I'm telling you, little is going to become much because we're going to place it in God's hands. He fed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. That 50 people that brought the album, God said it could be 50 NFL players that wants to sow into kingdom records. And God say, don't let kingdom records be what it was. Look at what it's going to be in the future. It ain't about no sales. It's about souls. And if we get the message of Jesus Christ, Shekinah glory, and everything else you got going up, if you focus on the message and get the message of Jesus out, regardless of whether there's 50 people that bought it, God's going to maximize his message. And God said, Son, you're looking at some sales. The fact that you actually got the CD out. The fact that you was in the studio and you didn't have no money. I'm talking about me. 
God told me to do a song in 2018. I ain't have nothing. And God said, don't go to your brother. That's the easy way. I want to show you what faith looked like. <laughs> I began to just do what he said do. And he said, son, he, I, I, the song was, our time under God is right now. His plans for my life are right now. All things in my life are working out. He's looking out for me right now. I won't even try to explain it. It's in his will, so I'll claim it. Our time under God is right now. I decree and I believe it today. So the Lord gave me that. I can't call her name no more. Michelle Akins. The Lord gave me that, Michelle. And the Lord told me, son, Joy, Jody, the Lord said, that song ain't for you to go be famous. That was in 2018, Tabitha. And what he was telling me, this song ain't about you going on no charts. This song is about letting you know that I got something for you in the future. And you need to believe it before you see it. I started to get focused on getting it out to the public. Making sure that we have the marketing. God said, son, you think that song was for the people. You still got it wrong. That song I gave you was for you. Your time under me. You were fit at that time I was 50 years old. And most 50 year olds, we're gonna just throw in the towel, we're just gonna go live life, go in the corner and just do little stuff. God said, uh-uh, where I'm taking you, there's some big things around the corner. And your time for me is right now. Don't try to explain it to people. Because once you try, you try and explain something that you don't even understand. It's in my will. I began to buy into the concept and I began to understand something I never understood before and I began to sell that to my own brother who's written songs for millionaires and felt like life has passed him by. So I had to minister to my big brother, Percy Beatty, who's written some of the most amazing songs that got y'all through. And in 2018, I go to a funeral and it's before the funeral starts. They're playing, they're playing processional music. And the old lady next to me starts to sing a song in 2018 that Percy Beatty wrote in the 80s. She starts to bust out singing, there is no way I can live without you. Do, 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 do. I pull out my phone and I go live calling Percy. There is no way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can go home. Mm -hmm. Percy gets on the phone. Percy's on FaceTime. He says, I said, shh, just listen. She says, burdens are too much for me to care. Then she said this line, y'all, and it broke him in tears, y'all. There is I can live without you. Percy Beatty is on the song phone in tears. I said, brother, never let a CD sale, uh, an award, a recognition ever define what God gave you. I said, this lady is singing that song next to me after her nephew has died. Her nephew has died in the coffin and she busts out at a funeral singing your song. Your song, it wasn't meant for nobody to celebrate your song and no award show. Don't minimize your blessing by thinking about what a war can do. Man looks on the outside. God know what he meant for that song to do in the spiritual realm. That song wasn't meant to just get no award. That song was written so that woman could get through her moment. And you cannot minimize what God is doing in your life because of the moments that you're going through. 
Send your DNA to make it, y'all. Last thing I'll tell you, I promise you I'm leaving. I promise you I'm leaving. The enemy is trying to block some things off. He's trying to tell you what you can't do and what ain't happened. And I'm telling you, he'll try to just let you know. He'll just try to tell you what's off limits. He'll try to tell you what you can't do. This is off limits. Come on, stand up, man of God. Come on. He'll try to tell you where you can't go. He'll try to block some things off in your life telling you, you can't do this. Trying to tell you where you can't go. And some of us are walking towards victory. And what we do, we think we're going to go around it. And just when we got it figured out, the enemy will start throwing tell you something. He'll start rapping and telling you where you can't go. He'll put you in his box, y'all. Trying to put you in this box. And now you feel trapped. And this is some of us in our lives. We can't go. And we stay boxed in. Never seeing everything. Because they said, who is they? Who is they? Who is they? I played a basketball game yesterday. I played in a tournament. Three on three tournament. It was a health and wellness. And they told me, you need to play in your age bracket. Who is they? And I hope you, I hope you're getting the principle of what Pastor Beatty's trying to tell you. It's a mentality. As soon as my brother and his officials told me, you got to play in the 50 to 54 year old division. I said, what's the other option? They say, you can play in the 40 to 49, but, but you got to, you can play in it. You can get some 40-year-olds and play with them, but you want to play, you want to play with the 50-year-olds. They told me that. But who is they? The so-called best team in the league. In that particular tournament yesterday, we played them first. And the adversity hit our team. We played some 40-year-olds from the west side of Chicago. What were they called? The west side. West Side Hoopers, they was legends from the west side of Chicago. They were between 40 and 49. They didn't have one 50-year-old on their team. Then my best player has an Achilles injury. Sitting on the front row. We flew him in. We thought he was going to carry us. I just thought I'd say that. And he was carrying us, y'all. We were up seven points with about six minutes left in the game. <laughs> And all of a sudden, he gets hurt. He goes running off. He comes back. I tell him to score. He said, we up, right? I said, no, we down seven. <laughs> I looked in his eyes, and he looked at me. Something hit me. And I'm trying to get y'all to understand the mentality about greatness. I'm trying to get y'all. This ain't about basketball. This is as so a man thinks. I thought I could win. I know people, I know players are better than me at 52 years. I know they're better than me. I know they're more athletic than me. But something in me says I can do it. What I started to do is what you need to start doing in your life. Some of y'all need to start doing this in the super. Who says my son can't be healed? Who says I can't live in that neighborhood? Who says my credit cannot go from 468 to 805? 
who says it? Every now and then, you got to do like I did. I wanted the ball. Gene, you was right there. I wanted the ball. We went into overtime. We tied the game up. They said, well, what is overtime? How does overtime? They said, the first one scores wins. Now, I'm going to tell you, the first thing that hit me was fear. If they get the ball, they could possibly score. Then uh, something in me says, well, if they get the ball, you could possibly stop them from scoring. That's so a man think it, so is he. We played hard. Pastor Betty got that ball. This ain't no lie. And this, I, I, I'm, I utilize this stuff to let you know health and wellness is in the mind first. Now, truth has it, somebody else should take the ball. I'm 52 years old. I don't think like that. I think that I'm the greatest. What's my name, y'all? Legend. I got the ball. I'll show you the videotape later. Bagged them down. Faked them once. Ball go up. Game point. I look at Darius and Marley. I say, yeah. Uh. <clears throat> Winning is a mentality. And some of us, if you never... Steve Harvey says this. I'll leave you with this. In life, there are times when you're just going to have to jump. Because some of y'all are, some of y'all are thinking, well, what if I miss? You'll never know if you ever, never shoot. If you never shoot, you'll never know whether or not you hit or miss. And some of us are reserved with the fact, Pastor Jeff, that I'm just... I'm not good enough. If it was about being good enough, I'd have never drove to the place, to the facility. I believe God is God enough to utilize my total life as an instrument, as a blessing. Because guess what? After we start celebrating and went over there, somebody said, y'all let a pastor beat y'all. But guess what? Two of them said, where's your church? And he'll say, where do you go to church? I want to go to church where there's, my, there's a pastor there that wins. He has a winning mentality. He's teaching us that no matter how dim it looks, no matter what bracket you in, if God can be for me, who? That's why SGM sings these songs. So tell me. His name is Jesus. Some of you need to take some of these pieces home. You need to tear up what they said you couldn't do. They said you, and you need to look back on the testimonies of your life. They said you couldn't graduate. They said your marriage wasn't going to work. They said you couldn't get your credit up. They said, whatever they said, tear it up. Tear it up! And because Jehoshaphat positioned himself, by the time they finished praising God, they got over there, and because of the sound that the armies heard, it confused them. They start fighting themselves. You can, you can make the enemy and his legions mad at they self by simply how you respond to your fight. Touch your neighbor and say, it's a fixed fight. It's fixed favor. Say, but you got to fight. And say, how our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Say, with your praise, Pull down strongholds. Come on, with your praise. Pull down strongholds. I'll pull it down right now. I'll pull it down right now. What the enemy says you can't do. What he's roped off in your life. If God be 
before me. So God, I honor you with this message today. And we thank you through the prophetic word of of Brother Emmanuel that there is a conversation happening in heaven. You got my name on your lips. Somebody need to say, you got my name on your lips. Steve Harvey say, people jumping out of paras- out of airplanes, he said, you're going to have to jump. He said, and it ain't guaranteed that that parachute going to open right away. The truth of the matter is, I missed the first shot to end the game in overtime. I missed it. But if I played the second shot by what happened with the first shot, I I would miss the game winner. God is saying you got a game winner inside of you. But you allowing the missed shots and missed opportunities of life to dictate how you shoot the next shot. Preach, black man. And the Bible tells us, Corey, forgetting the things that are behind us. Michael Jordan had an incredible commercial. He says, I've missed 400 and some shots. I missed 19 game winners. He says, goes on to say, I miss so many blah, blah, blah. And then he said, and that's the reason why I succeed. Sometimes, you know what I do? I look at how I missed to be able to make the adjustment of the miss. (laughs) So I shot it this way, oh, and it hit the front of the rim. So I need to shoot it just a little bit more. Some of y'all don't need to stop shooting. You just need to adjust your shot. Adjust what you're doing in the spirit realm. God has me preaching this to you today. Everybody stand on your feet. Just be, don't clap, don't clap, don't clap. Say, I receive this today. I hear God saying, adjust your parenting. Adjust how you're dealing with your spouse. Some of y'all got girlfriends. Some of y'all got fiancés. God said, adjust, make a small adjustment. There are some business endeavors that are on the table. God said, just make an adjustment. This marriage with Shalon and I would not be possible had I not made an adjustment 30 years ago. I couldn't continue the way I was. I had to make a small adjustment in my character that led now to my destiny of 31 years of marriage. I was a horrible husband. I was a dictator. I had to make an adjustment. She was about to leave my butt. I had her fleeing into another man's arms because of what I didn't do. See, we don't tell this part. Then I'm mad at her and I call myself on tour with R. Kelly. I think I got me a girlfriend. And God says, sit your butt down. I designed this. Go to her. Get on your knees and apologize honor that woman and I had to make some adjustments that's the truth of the matter and the truth don't hinge me hinge me up the truth makes me free I'm free and Shalon is free to be a hundred percent of ourselves to each other I don't know who I'm ministering to today but every night you threw your hand up you gotta you gotta make a pivot You got to make a pivot and it's okay to adjust some things to be able to make God look good in the earth. If you don't remember one more thing in this sermon, remember you are carrying something greater than yourself. You are carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're an ambassador. Act like you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you for this word today that it did not fall on deaf ears. We thank you, God, for the souls that will come to Christ today because of the word that was given today. That some people got it wrong, but God, as long as they're still breathing and got breath in their body, they got time to get it right. Allow them to make the adjustments. You get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Give God a hand praise.